uh, OS X has Siri and Android has Google now. So what about the Linux desktop and what about the Linux operating system? So I'd like to introduce to you uh, Mycroft AI. Mycroft AI is, the, is one of the very first open source digital assistants available on the Linux desktop. And it's extensible, it's customizable, and it's completely open source. So you can, anyone can run it on any device, like you can run it on a Raspberry Pi, or you can run it on a desktop, or even a smartwatch. So um, going ahead with, uh, micro, more ahead with Microft AI, I'd like to introduce to you uh, the Plasmoid, that is the front end for Microft AI on the Plasma desktop. So you can see the, uh, the Plasmoid consists of uh, an animation bar on the top that gives you the Microft status. Um, it is a start and stop button, so you can run Microft whenever you feel like, and it's not always running. And uh, you can even mute micro Microft when you don't want it to listen to you. And you can pin Microft to the desktop. Additionally, uh, the navigation bar is on the left. Uh, it has four tabs, uh, consists of the home tab. Uh, it has skill tips. It can tell you, the skill tips tell you um, what commands you can run. Uh, the settings uh, tab and install skills tab. So when I talk about skills, uh, skills are something that is developed by the community people at Mycroft, and they can be different skills that integrate with different backend services. So it could be basically if you have a music player, you could integrate, you could write a skill for Mycroft to integrate with the music player, or if you have, for example. Um, a smart bulb or Philips Hue bulb or something, you can connect Microft to the API and run a speech recognition command from there. So I'm going to be giving you a short demo on how Microft works. So th this is the Plasmoid, and now I'm going to just run a few commands and see what we can do on the Plasma desktop. So, hey, Mycroft, open Firefox. So you can open applications. <laughs> so let's run. So let's try something more, what we can do with the desktop. Uh, hey, Mycroft, search this computer for Mycroft. I am searching locally for Mycroft. So you can even search okay, run and stuff for Mycroft. I'm afraid I couldn't understand that. Uh, so let's see some other stuff. Uh, hey, Mycroft, create an activity test. Your activity has been created. So you can create activities. <laughs> yeah, and try something else. Hey, Mycroft, change wallpaper type abstract. So you can even change wallpapers. And uh, so now on the Plasmoid side, uh, some new stuff. I mean, apart from text messages, uh, we can even do uh, visual messages. We can receive visual uh, details from Microf. Oops. Uh, just give me a second. Can you please repeat that? OK. Hey, Microft, what is the current weather? With a high of 29 and a low of 28, so you Lawrence weather, has clear weather, sky and is currently 28 the degrees. To whatever location you're at. So, uh, and another thing you can do is interactive uh, visual uh, messages. 
uh, hey Mycroft, what is the stock price of Apple? Apple Inc. with ticker symbol Apple is currently trading at $150.27 per share. So you can, so there's visual feedback, you can even open this up in our external browser from the Plasmoid. Uh, so this is currently the state of the Plasmoid and uh, you can of course do uh, text stuff, like you can even talk to Microsoft through text. Uh, there's a suggestion bar, so you can select a word from... Chuck Norris doesn't need strike out, exceptions are too afraid to raise. So that's about for the demo for now. And this is how far the Microsoft Plasmoid has gotten. Uh, so what's next for Microsoft Plasmoid? So more, more skills for the Plasmoid, like it, it should be able to interact with more applications and uh, more integration into the desktop. So maybe next time we can say open notifications or um, show clear my notifications or maybe and play uh, some music based on whatever my key, music keyword is and uh, easier installation, so Microsoft is not clearly not packaged pretty well, and we're looking for distributions to package Microsoft so everyone can give it a try and help improve the user experience better. Uh, getting involved, uh, so Microsoft has uh, a Slack channel, that's where all the developers, are con community guys are contributing at, and we all hang out there. And you could always try uh, compiling it from the Git. That's the Git address. So questions? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. So we've seen in the demo that there was always quite a significant delay between the command and the reaction. So what, what is this delay caused by and what uh, can be done about it? So I think my internet connection is really bad right now. And uh, when the wallpaper time it take, took a lot of time to download the wallpaper. So if I'm on a faster connection, it happens much faster. So if, if, it's a text, if, if, if I'm doing a text command, so a text command would probably be much faster than speech to text because speech to text is still going through uh, Google SDT and it has to go to the Google server and then all the way come back and get processed. Just answer the question. It's, it's, it's about the same question, but I, I think even with the first command that was to open Firefox, it, it did have some delay. So I'm, I'm actually wondering what's... It, it has to go to the Google SDD, then comes back to the Google API. It always go to the... Yeah, because that's what we're using for the speech-to-text engine currently. So Microsoft is trying to work with uh, getting something like Open SDT, that's the open speech-to-text model, and they're trying to incorporate other things like pocket springs and uh, stuff to... So we can skip Google SDT altogether, but it's still a long shot. Uh, okay. Um, so, any more questions? I think we can take one more. Uh, okay, no questions. Cool. Uh, th that was an awesome talk. Thank you, Aditya. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um,